Internet world and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to focus on the GLI, but I do want to bring a little point about the A3 in this video. So when comparing both cars, why would I bring an A3 front wheel drive in the picture? And that is price. When someone's looking for a GLI, they're never thinking about a front wheel drive A3. They're thinking about an S3 or possibly an A3 Quattro. However, from a cost perspective, the A3 and the GLI are pretty much on par up here in Canada. In the US, you guys are lucky. This has a starting price of about $26,000, whereas this car has a starting price of $33,000. Why the difference? Well, in the US, they come with a lot less equipment up than up here in Canada. Not only that, the GLI comes in stick or manual, whatever you like to call it, but it doesn't come in an A3, which is a shame, but that is the reason why they built the GLI. I just found it really interesting that the A3 in Canada is $34,500, but in the US is $33,000. That's a spread of about $1,500 from cost from the US to Canada. But for the GLI, I know it comes less equipment, but the spread is huge. For the A3, at this price point, it makes 184 horsepower and 222 foot-pounds of torque. The GLI makes 228 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds of torque out of this 2-liter engine, which you guessed it, which is the same engine out of the A3 Quattro. When it comes to price, I borrowed this car from the fine guys over at Dalmar Motors right here in London, Ontario. Make sure to visit their website and shop at their GLIs. So right here in pure gray, as I said, the Canadian version doesn't have the Autobahn edition. They just have one specific one with a tech package you can add to that. This car has that tech package. So on the front here, we've got LED standard. We've got a honeycomb grill with the red accent running through the front of the grill, as well as they have this upper black valence that's in piano black. It's nice because it actually matches all the black in the car and it's not color coded like the Arteon. In the Arteon it was white, but in this specific case, it's black all the way through. First downfall, gotta work my arms out. This hood is heavy. One of the neat things about this new GLI is they've put in a mechanical LSD, which is a mechanical slip differential. And what that essentially means is that when one wheel starts to slip, it transfers power to the other wheel so they move at the exact same rotation. Versus in the A3, when that happens, it applies brakes to the wheels that slip. So in this case, this is more of a proactive system, whereas the A3, as proactive as it is, it's a little bit more reactive to what the system brings to you. What else is there? One of the biggest roadblocks I see with people buying a GTI or a GLI is insurance. The demographics of people that buy the GLI or GTI are generally male and they're generally younger. However, the A3 doesn't have that. The people that buy the A3 want more luxury, they probably won't drive as fast, and even though they, they share the same engines, the Quattro version, the insurance is the difference maker. Or at least we think. I shopped insurance with three different companies, and I got quotes of about $3 differences between a GLI and an A3 front wheel drive. And that blew my mind away. I was always under the assumption that GTIs and GLIs were more expensive than insurance, but that is actually not factually true. I'm not huge into four-door sedans, but the aesthetics of this car is actually very clean looking. So a lot of cars I see today have a lot of extra plastic on the outside. Now I know there's a lot of write-ups on the internet about the plastic on the inside of this car, and I'll get to that in a minute, but on the outside of this car, the design is very sleek. There's a single shoulder line that goes all the way back. There's a slight dynamic line that's just above that that pulls the way through right to the edge of the seam here. Another piece I do like is I like the fact that they're actually color-coded mirrors, and the sunroof actually plays all the way back here in glass like the A3s. Now I know it's unfair to compare a car that's built in Germany to a car that's built in Mexico. However, there are some pieces that Volkswagen slash Audi did put, and that is the way this door closes. This door closes like an Audi. <sighs> Gotta say it guys, this thing still closes like a Volkswagen in the back. Now everybody's gonna start hating on the bottom. No, that's not true. There's an Audi and there's a Volkswagen, but they're the same company. I get it, they're the same company, but there's less quality materials put in certain products and higher quality materials put in Audi products. That's the differentiation I was talking about. When I looked at it, I'm like, man, I'm like, this, this side profile right here kind of looks like a Camry. <laughs> okay, but here, hold on. But here looks exactly very similar to an A4. It's very Audi-ish right here. I mean, obviously the rear valence, the exhaust pipes are very A3-like. This broad shoulder in the back looks very similar to an A4. This trunk is 50% bigger than an A3 Quattro and 60% bigger than a front-wheel drive A3. And that's because the rear axle is not there. However, 
I just think that this sill needs to be on the plate or they should just recess these bumpers in a little bit. This is just gonna get so beat up. And I know they sell products you can put on here, but then why have a sill plate that doesn't extend here? So that's my only real complaint about accessing inside and outside this truck, but this truck is huge. There's a lot of space. Golf clubs can easily fit in this car. So there is some cost cutting I see right here. And that is this back shelf panel, as well as some of the lock pieces and the carpet all the way through. I'm just not a big fan of this carpet material. I, I just find the Audis do a better job of this type of quality in the carpet. Now obviously I can pick and be picky about it, but it's not only that, it's when I pull this down, it's a little bit hard and then oh, it gets really easy all of a sudden. So I know it's because of the weight and I just don't like the fact these are exposed. In the Audi, they actually do have little shock absorbers right here that holds it up versus this is just pretty normal for an economy car. I get it, can't complain. I got a really neat fact about the GLIs and that was the GLIs were actually built first and then they based the Jetta off the GLI. So it's not like they built the Jetta first and then made the GLI. They actually constructed the GLI first and then built the new Jetta off that process. And that I got from the guys at Dahmer. Three things I like about the back of this car is the color-coded spoiler, the rear valence, and the real exhaust tips. So in the A3s, you have a little hanger where you can hang down and you can have, have groceries hang, but you don't have that in the GLI. However, in the GLI, you do have levers are there that fold the back seats down, which you don't have in the A3. So there are still some German pieces in this car. The door hinges are a German piece. The back seats, they do have great support. Um, I really do like all the stitching in it. I mean, the stitching, they do a good job. It falls all the way from the front seats, goes all the way through the back, around the headdress, and also on the carpet. I don't know how many viewers actually sit in the back seats of their vehicles. However, my child does, and Heated seats is important, and you can't get that in an A3. So I measured the seat in the back here, and this headroom is identical to the back of an A3. However, it is a little bit wider. Here's a weird thing in the back seat. The driver's seat doesn't have a pocket to put anything in, but in the passenger seat, it does. So I guess the people behind here don't sit behind here, or the guy driving is like seven feet tall and needs all the space he can get. Another really cool part about the GLI is remote start. Having remote start just makes the difference in colder climates or even warmer climates. You either want your car to cool when you get in or hot when you get in because having a freezing cold car sucks. All right, so as I sit in this car now, I can tell you, and I read a lot about this car before I got it, and a lot of hate was directed at the plastic panels in the car. And yes, there's a lot of plastic, but let's not talk about the door panels. Let's talk about when you're in the car. These seats are comfortable. They do have heated and cooled which is the Audi's, you can't get it in an A3 in that, in that model that we talked about. It does have an awesome steering wheel, which it did pull from a GTI. So GTI and GL have the same steering wheel and this steering wheel is awesome. So from a driver's perspective, I get in the car, the dash is faced towards me. The steering wheel has most of the buttons I need. Yeah, it does have the, the paddles and the paddles are not cheap. They, they actually do press them, they feel good quality. Um, my pedals, you know, as you know, is they are from an Audi product. These pedals are Audi. The seats, they are better than a regular A3. Now you can get a sport seat in an A3 and it's similar to this. The difference in a sport A3 is the headrest do actually move forward and backwards. This one just goes up and down. This does have the armrest. The ar armrest is not on par with the Audis. The Audis do have a better armrest. They have softer padding um, as well as a height adjustment. There is this little plastic piece you can pull down to set it a little bit higher which I kind of get it if you're, if you're theoretically braking hard. The Audis can slide forward under intense braking, so this one doesn't move anywhere, so I kind of get it. This sunroof, they call it rail to rail or rail by rail or something about a rail. Um, when I'm closing this, it's very loud, very easy in the beginning, and then all of a sudden gets really hard right about here. So, yeah, there's a flaw. A lot more storage than the Audis, for sure. I mean, a lot more storage from the, Audi, the Audis. And certain things are more toys. So the Audi standard for that price point, it's a manual rear view mirror, whereas this one is automatic. You don't gotta touch nothing. You get the wireless charging on your phone. Obviously, dual climate control, that's all kind of the same thing. Tech is exactly the same as the Audis. There's no difference at that price point. But I think the real neat point here is gonna be the drive. The drive is really gonna make the difference. So this is being really picky here. The voice activation is not up to today's standards because as I hit voice and I say stuff like, 
Find a restaurant. Please repeat. Find a restaurant. You can also always say back, restart voice operation, help, All or right. cancel voice operation. So some of the newer ones have smart voice and they understand if you say find a Chinese restaurant, take me to a gas station, we're not there yet with this GLI. Voice operation paused. So we'll just stick to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So just a funny thing here, the HVAC controls when you put them on, dual climate controls on both sides, the numbers are the perfect size, they're not too big, they're not too small, but when you shut it off, just the way the, the, just the, way the pixels look here, it's big O, big F, and then little big F. So it's off. So just a piece to sort of finish off the interior is, I hope that Volkswagen does in the next GLI and GTI, is the start stop button should have a red ring around it. That will complete it. Yeah, sure, you can have some red pieces around here, but just the start stop button is like, that's the passion and endurance that we car guys want to feel when you buy something like this and press the button, push down the red button and she starts. That's what we want to hear. I mean, you plumbed in sound, so let's just put a red ring around here. So you can custom change it. You can change your, to have sport, your DCC or suspension, to have some normal sport, your steering, sport, as this car has progressive steering and it has a full adjustable, in theory, has a dynamic suspension so you can make it bumpier or softer as you drive across the road, but I'll get in that when I'm driving. You've got a front diff lock. These are really cool features. So I'm okay with not having an insulated trunk. I'm okay with plasticky door panels, but this is the type of stuff that a car guy is gonna eat up. All right, so we're taking the GLI for a drive now and I've got it in sport mode and uh, when I went from normal to sport, the RPMs raised a little bit. The suspension's gonna tighten up because it says damping suspension. Yeah, it's got roll bars in the front, so I'm excited to kind of... Ooh, it sounds good. Oh yeah, she flies. Oh God, I haven't had this smile and... Well, this is definitely way more fun to drive than the Arteon I just drove. <clears throat> All right, so I'm in sport, dynamic, and let's hear how this sounds here. Full throttle. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> it's just, it's just so meaty and throaty. But the crazy part about it is it's not real, but it's sucking me in like it's real. So Drake, the sound in this car is not real. Like that noise that you're hearing of the exhaust is not real. There's a speaker in the car that makes that noise. So like this noise you're hearing is not real. So it's like everybody else doesn't hear it outside the car, but you inside the car, you get excited with that noise because that noise does bring some adrenaline with, you know, in your system, even though you've never heard it before. So it's kind of cool actually. All right. Just... <laughs> That's funny. It just, how does how do you explain? Okay, so Drake, do you remember how like you loved gummies, but then once I told you that gummies were made out of out of beef stomach or whatever, you just felt a little bit funny about that those gummies, right? So that's kind of how I feel about this sound. Like I love the fact that it's there. So you love the fact that you like the way it tastes the gummies, but the fact that you know that it's not real just just or the fact that you know that the gummies are not what you think they are it changes your mind a little bit about it right but then when you eat the gummies you're like oh that's cool i'm, I'm cool with the gummies but now you're like so that's exactly how i feel about the sound i'm like i love the sound but just knowing that it's not real it just sort of hinders my thoughts so when i put it over in manual mode and it goes from first to second it automatically upshifts so i don't touch anything and it automatically goes from first to second so that no so it doesn't bounce off the rev limiter now there's a lot of hate online about it, but here's the deal. Anybody that actually is a pure enthusiast will probably most likely buy a stick anyways. So does it really matter that it upshifts for you? Yeah, it's kind of annoying. You should be able to hold the gear, but is it a deal breaker? Not really, to be honest. So it does have start and stop. Um, the start and stop is a bit jerky, to be honest. Um, 
yeah, it's, it's it's really jerky. Like the initial to go to drive, I, I feel like they they set the uh, idle speed in terms of movement a little bit too high because as soon as you let go of the brake, it kind of gives this this push. That's one complaint. It's roomy. I, I like the fact that the front end sort of feels like a GTI, but the back end, I know that I got space for the family, so it's like party in the front, business in the back, or business in the front, party in the back, and something like that. I'm not sure which one. Depends on how your day is going. But yeah, it's, okay, it feels good. It, it is a really good, zippy, fun car. I mean, you gotta think, this is, a, this is an affordable dream car for a lot of guys. I mean, it's affordable, it's roomy, it's fully tunable, you can get it in stick. I mean, the fact you can get this car in manual is awesome. I mean, that's, that is like a dying breed. I mean, you can't get a supercar in stick. I mean, there's, there's Porsches that you can, but most supercars all now come in automatic or DSG or some sort of sequential gearbox. But the fact you can get this in manual, you can tune it, you can fit the family in it. It's got a big trunk. It averages 40 miles in the, you know, it can get 40 miles per gallon. I mean, the fact of all that put together and it's priced in the States at $26,000. I mean, I don't know how you can beat that number. It's 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 mind boggling. And you can get cool colors. You can't you can't just get white or black, you know? You can get this gray, which is amazing to know that they offer this kind of stuff. And from OEM, you got warranty. So that all that put together makes it a pretty unique package. Just sounds so good. <laughs> it, the shifts are very fast and crisp. It just sounds so good. And the downshifts, yeah, they're, they're on they're sharp. As soon as I hit the button, it goes down. It waits for the... I would say that the shifts, the downshifts, they could program it to be a little bit tighter. Um, when you hit it, it kind of waits. It only sort of engages when the engine's about 4,000, 4,500 RPM. When, you know, it can, like some of the more performance-geared cars, um, get down to about 6,000 RPM. So this one sort of is a little bit conservative, but tuning can, can fix that. As far as oversteer or understeer, um, I don't really have full road to test it out, but I would say if you change the tires, which is one of my big recommendations on this car, that'll totally help that. But in terms of feel, the car doesn't feel big. The sound is really engaging. So I mean, I, I would say that without the sound, this will be a lot less engaging. I would say for sure that the sound is required at this stage now that I've driven this thing for a while. So I'm gonna try this now in comfort mode and see how this sounds like, or in eco mode and see how this sounds. So yeah, so the throttle the same input, that the subbed in sound is gone under normal load here. Yeah, it's gone, so it feels like a normal car now. So it's kinda of neat that you can put it on, you can put it off. So yeah, there's a big difference in driving an eco and driving it in sport. In eco, it feels like a regular Jetta. But in sport, all of a sudden it wakes up and you get the sound in there, you hit it. There we go, it's coming back now. It's waking up, it's coming alive. All right guys, thanks for watching this video on this 2020 GLI. I hope you liked it. I like the fact that you get sportiness, you get power, you get miles per gallon, and you get price. That is the most important thing right here, is the fact that you can get price, but in a six speed. I know this wasn't a six speed, but the fact you can get in a six speed that's a dying breed and you can tune it. I mean, how can you go wrong? So guys, take a look at the all new 2020 GLI.